Rock here. Welcome back to another edition of Coming Soon, during which, in which, with which, and all so forth, we will discuss things that are coming soon. So I just got some discs in the mail, and I have a couple that I got in the mail since the last time I did one of these. So let us dig in. These are all going to be discs that, as always, look at the description below this video on the YouTube, and I've got all of the release dates, the street dates, the releasing companies, Amazon buying links, and I always say if you buy them through these Amazon buying links, I get a little something, doesn't cost you a penny more, and it helps me uh, occasionally get a haircut and buy a new t-shirt. So, things that are coming soon, maybe by the time you've already seen this. Uh, first up, this is what I've been looking forward to very much, partially for the packaging and partially for the content. This is from MVD Rewind Collection. This is Joysticks. Now, I remember seeing ads for this on TV when it came out. This was the early 80s, 83, I want to say this film was, and it was uh, capitalizing on the success of the video game explosion, the insane explosion of arcade games and Atari home video games and things like this. And it's a film about totally awesome video games. Now, it's, it's no brilliant film. It's an 80s sex comedy that has... Uh, Joe Don Baker is really the biggest name associated with this, but I love the packaging. MVD does such a great job with emulating retro packaging. This looks like, in case you weren't around at the time, this looks like an Atari cartridge. I mean, down to the font, down to what's on the front and the back, the uh, slipcase for this makes it look like it's an old Atari arcade game. So this is a Blu-ray with slipcase slips off to reveal uh, similar artwork, very similar artwork based on the original poster. I'm always a fan when a company's gonna use the original poster. And uh, what is this film about? It is about 88 minutes. This film is, uh, there's something going on at the local video arcade, something totally insane, outrageously hilarious, very sexy and thoroughly entertaining, the hit film Joysticks. This was a Graydon Clark film who made a lot of drive-in classic films. Uh, the antic romp begins when the video arcade's newest employee, Eugene Leaf Green from Grease 2, arrives uh, pantsless for his first day on the job. Really need I go any farther with this? Basically, the idea with this film is uh, there's a video game arcade. All the kids are going and spending their money and, and getting it on. And there's a gang of punks headed by John Grise as King Vidiot and uh, the establishment. Think, think Footloose. The establishment uh, represented by Joe Don Baker, you know, what with a tie and a suit and all that, wants to shut the arcade down. The kids don't want him to shut the arcade down. It's, it's a 50s kind of uh, teen comedy, teen uh, youth on the loose kind of film uh, crossed with like Porky's and video games. So uh, that's the outside, the... MVD Rewind Collection does this thing where they make the disc surface look like an old VHS face label. So that's, you can't really see it on here, but the, the texture and the context is there. And it uh, comes with a mini poster of the cover that folds out. And that looks like, again, not sure you can see here, that really looks like the top of an Atari cartridge. So I always appreciate MVD's uh, attention to detail, especially the Rewind Collection and when they do this. And you get the little poster here, which on one side is the slipcase art. And on the other side is the cartridge art, which is fantastic. Uh, a mini plug here. If you look it up on the line, the Mahoning Drive-In Theater, where I spend most of my waking hours when I'm not doing this, we are screening joysticks on 35 millimeter with a special only ever going to see it once, only at our theater introduction by John Grise as King Vidiot himself in character uh, just before the film. So it's going to be totally awesome video games. MVD is going to be there selling uh, copies of this disc. I think it's basically a Blu-ray release party we're pitching it as. And that is, I want to say, May 9th. Let me just look at a calendar and I will tell you the truth. I don't edit these. That will be May 12th, I should say. This comes out on May 7th and on May 12th, the following Sunday. If you're available, I would highly encourage you to come out to the Mahoning Drive-In Theater in Lehighton, Pennsylvania to see joysticks on 35 millimeter with all kinds of fun stuff in and around that. Plug done for that. So up next, we have from Cult Epics, Cult Epics is a really cool label if you don't know that a lot of European films, they, they put up the Marlene Goris, which I'm mispronouncing, I'm sorry, uh, films, really interesting Euro films a lot of the time. They've also been the exclusive U.S. distributor of the Tinto Brass films for many years on DVD and Blu-ray. And they're just going through right now, putting a lot of these out on 4K. And that's what this is. This is Frivolous Lola on 4K. Tinto Brass, if you don't know Tinto Brass, if you know Russ Meyer, think about what Russ Meyer really specialized and focused upon, and Tinto Brass is similar, but round back. So this is a series of Italian erotic uh, comedy dramas. This is a 4K Ultra HD, UHD disc, and a Blu-ray. So I always say, if you don't have the Blu-ray, 
you don't have the 4K player, buy, get this, you've got the Blu-ray, and if you ever do get a 4K player, hey, you can just upgrade instantly. So uh, join the Joie de Vivre Club with the matteringly charming Lola as she plans to loosen up her fiancé in this exuberant, sexy comedy. Everyone is wild about Lola, Lola even some suspect her own stepfather. Ew. Frivolous Lola is Tinto Brass's most likable film called Epix presents the 4K UHD world premiere of the uncut and uncensored director's cut with new and vintage bonus features, including on the 4K UHD disc, you get the 4K transfer from the original negative and restoration, HDR, audio commentary by Eugenio Ercolani and Nathaniel Thompson, both who do great work, 4K theatrical trailers. The Blu-ray disc has the 4K new transfer, only not in 4K because it's a Blu-ray. Audio commentary, same, theatrical trailers. Also, interview with director Tinto Brass from 2004. Photo gallery uh, includes, well, I'm going to show you what it includes. So it's 105 minutes, 1998 Italian uh, language with English subtitles. And I guess there's some English in there, too. A DTS HDMA 5.1 surround or DTS HDMA 2.0 stereo. It is 185 aspect ratio. And I do not see what the region code is on this. So if we take the disc here, being careful to not take this, the... Uh, plastic off because I'm particular and we take that off there. Oh, that's a Heine. Well, I guess you can show, you can show that. That's the alternate cover. I actually bought this on, uh, when I was getting into the Tinto Brass films, you couldn't really get them here. The only place you could get them is European import DVDs, or you could get Hong Kong, Asian country DVDs. And I had gotten, uh, I think it was a Hong Kong or Taiwanese DVD of this film. And it was, it was that uh, cheeky as it were cover. So you get the front and the back on that, crack it open, we get, uh, Cult Epics is doing a really nice job with these. This film was also titled Manella on its original release. So we get a series of one, two, three, four Manella lobby card reproductions. We get a nice little booklet, nice hefty little booklet there with uh, writings about the film. And then we get the uh, two different discs, each with representing one of the different covers. And is it a reversible cover? Yes, it is. Can I show you? Yes, I can. So it is either the Frivolous Lola or the Manella cover. So very excited about this. They've also just released, which I don't know if I covered here or not, All Ladies Do It, which I've yet to watch. That is another of these new 4K releases. And then they're also putting out, which I hope to be getting soon, and I haven't opened these packages yet, so for all I know, it's right here. Cult Epics is putting out a two-disc Blu-ray collection of those two films, not on 4K, and a bunch of the other Central Brass titles they've previously released. So it's a cool way to kind of get it all at once. Coming soon from a company that is a new label to me, Whole Grain Pictures. This is Too Much Sleep. This is a late 90s, I believe, comedy, indie comedy, and uh, the critically acclaimed comedy that the world slept on for 23 years. It, it, Jack is stuck in neutral. He lives with his mom in suburban New Jersey, works as a security guard and can barely, security guard, uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt pronunciation wise, and can barely get out of bed in the morning. All that changes when he sees a cute girl on the bus and then realizes seconds later that his gun is missing. So it's a comedy of errors. That what I like about this uh, comes with documentary, The Story of Too Much Sleep, newly produced trailer, isolated musical score, which very few releases do anymore. Commentary by director David McElling and star Mark Palmieri. It is an all region disc. So anywhere in the world, you could import this disc to uh, the Sudan and it will play for you there. What I like, and I don't know if you can see this on here, uh, whole grain pictures, the features on the back look like the nutritional information on a food package, which I thought was a nice touch. And we crack it open and uh, nothing too fancy in there, just an image on the disc. So review coming soon on this and everything else that you see here. Now, so newly arrived for me today from Film Movement is, uh, puts out a lot of interesting stuff. I don't know if I even asked for this disc, so it's gonna be, gonna be news to the both of us. What might lie therein? We have a DVD of, I can't, Alam? Alam, I believe this is called. This is completely fresh and new to me. Film Movement specializes in a lot of indie, a lot of foreign titles, and uh, generally pretty interesting stuff. Tamer, Tamer, a Palestinian teenager in Israel, leads a typical high school student's life until the arrival of the beautiful Messiah. Drawn to her and, by extension, her political activism, Tamer decides to join an operation to covertly raise the Palestinian flag and peacefully disrupt the celebrations planned for Israel's Independence Day, a time of mourning and memorialization for Palestinians. Wow, is this a timely title right now? So this is in, <clears throat> excuse me, I get choked up when I talk about DVDs of films I've never heard of. France, Tunisia, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, Qatar language. 
5.1 surround sound, 2.0 stereo, Arabic and Hebrew with English subtitles. Oh, I'm sorry, that was the countries that, that were behind this film. So international co-production, which you used to see a lot in the 60s and 70s. You don't really see as much anymore. So it was a co-production of France, Tunisia, Palestine, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar. 2.39 widescreen, so a pretty wide film, 109 minutes. It is an all-region DVD, so once again, in Palestine or in America, this disc will play just the same. And uh, let's see, let's crack it open and see what it looks like on the inside. For those of you who like the sound of plastic rustling, or me just staring into a camera while plastic ruffles. Trying to get the plastic. Okay. So we crack it open and, oh nice, reversible cover. <clears throat> I'm so easily uh, easily impressed. So we've got the uh, disc there, reversible cover that has artwork and statement from the director. So a uh, little information there. I always like it when they do that. It's a very, as I say, very British thing. That was often the case long before clear cases were a thing here. Uh, in England, videotapes and DVDs often would have the clear case. So they could just essentially put liner notes or track listings or something without having to insert more stuff. So now we have a giant bundle from my friends at MVD. Uh, like I said, this just came in the mail today. I have no idea what's in here, how photogenic any of it might be, but uh, let's find out. Ooh, it's all very photogenic. Once again, look down below in the description, the text description to find out when this stuff comes out. And ooh, ooh, I'm very excited. You're gonna see me giggle like a, like a suffering fool. Wowzers, golly gosh. So we're gonna go through this as best we can. We have, from 88 Films, continuing the series that they started a little while ago, Inspector Wears Skirts 3. This is a fun series of films. It's really, there were films that were inspired by the Police Academy series in Hong Kong. Films that inspired the Police Academy series, these films came from Hong Kong, and they were basically like an all-female Police Academy. It's, you know, ragtag band of misfit cadets led by a, a sharp commanding, female commanding officer and going out on missions. And then the second film was much less about missions and more about training a new series of cadets, much like Police Academy 2. So I'm very excited to see where this series goes. They were always good about having a lot of big stars or a lot of the luminaries in Hong Kong film at the time. The first one or two were produced by Jackie Chan and all the stunts were done by the Jackie Chan stunt team. So the level of action was really high. So Inspector Wears Skirts 3, Raid on Royal Casino Marine. I've heard about this for a long time. Who do we have in this? We have Sibel Hu, Sandra Eng, Amy Yip, Kara Wai, Stanley Fung, and Billy Lau, who were in a lot of the other ones. Wilson Chin comes back as director. Inspector Ka Khan, Stanley Fung, is now married to Madame Wu, Sibel Hu. These things, the characters they develop, uh, has been instructed to train the Banshee Squad members after Madame Wu goes into semi-retirement for their next mission. The squad is assigned to go undercover on a casino ship to nab a group of thieves responsible for stolen law enforcement and military weapons. This is exciting because the first movie was a lot of fun and it was a lot of training, but they're also like it started and ended with a lot of action. The second film really was didn't really do a lot in the way of action. It was much more a comedy, so it's exciting to see that these are getting past the training stuff unless this becomes like Police Academy where they go a few movies down and then they have to train new recruits again. Uh, special features include 2K remaster from the original negatives presented in high definition 1080p, Blu-ray, and 185 aspect ratio. <gasps> original Cantonese mono with English subtitles mono. Audio commentary by Hong Kong film expert Frank Jang. Deleted scene, Hong Kong trailer, reversible cover with new artwork by Sean Longmire and original Hong Kong poster art. It's 185 aspect ratio from 1990. Color 97 minutes, Cantonese, LPCM mono English subtitles, it's region A and B. So what that means is in America and in England, this will work because as I always say, 88 Films is a British company. So they just encode them that way to make it easier, make their masters easier. So it's a slip case that slips off to reveal uh, the same artwork and the back looks like that. The smoked case, as I like to call it. So you got a little original artwork on the, on the disc there. And we, uh, if you can see that, we've got the original movie poster as the reversible cover, which I love because I'm not going to be a guy who has the space or the time to look for it or the money to go and buy original posters of everything. So if you can give me a reproduction, even if it's shrunk down of the original poster for something, it makes me happy. And then these 88 films almost always come with a nice cardstock, thick quality uh, poster reproduction, mini poster of the new artwork and flip it over and the old artwork. So that's really cool. I love that. Inspector Wears Skirts 3. Is that where this series ends? By God, no, because we have Inspector Wears Skirts 4.
The Inspector Wears Skirts 4. What's this one about? This one is about 94 minutes. We have to save the Hong Kong police force's Banshee squad from in becoming defunct, the struggling new squad members seek the help of former officers Amy, Sandra Ng, now a divorced mom with a young kid, and May, Kara Wai, now partially mentally unstable to help them with their training regiment led by Madam Yang, Cynthia Khan. Their police skills are put to the test when they are ordered to nab a band of brutal thugs in the city. So again, it looks like we're just getting to action on this. So this isn't, no more training to be had. Uh, uh, 185 aspect ratio, 1992 color, 94 minutes, Cantonese and English audio, English subtitles, LPCM mono, once again, region A and region B. Special edition includes, uh, I'm not going to tell you about the things I'm going to show you in a second, 2K remaster from the original negatives presented in HD, Blu-ray 185 aspect ratio, original Cantonese mono with English subtitles, English mono dub audio commentary by Frank Jang, who's always great, if I should ever neglect to mention that, he really knows his stuff, Hong Kong trailer, stills gallery, reversible cover with new artwork by Sean Longmire, and original Hong Kong poster art. So speaking of Frank Jang, I'll do a separate little video on this, but while I'm opening this up, I was uh, very lucky to be able to attend the Staten Island, New York screening of the new documentary by David Gregory entitled The Clones of Bruce. No, Enter the Clones of Bruce, which is a documentary about Bruce Bloitation. All of the films that emerged in the wake of Bruce Lee's desk with guys who may or may not even looked at all like him named Bruce something. And uh, it's a great documentary. It's unbelievable. I'll review it in full separately. But uh, Frank Jang was there and it was really, he was involved with that documentary. It was really cool to see him in person because I've listened to his voice so often on all these 88 films and Arrow and Eureka and everybody else's Blu-rays and uh, nice guy. So anyway, we have the slip case, which slips to reveal the same art. And on the back, open it up. We've got a little picture on the disc there. Do this again. We've got, uh, I think you can see where this is going to go. You get a reproduction, reversible cover reproduction of the original poster art. And then we get a cool, once again, on thick, heavy cardstock, durable. I'm not afraid that it's going to rip when I open this up. Uh, reproduction of the new artwork and reproduction of the old British quad style artwork. Coming soon. Look up below when these things are coming out. From MVD Rewind Collection. I said earlier how they're really cool and how I love that they replicate the look of older uh, packaging. Hardware Wars. Hardware Wars and other film uh, fa farces. Do you know Hardware Wars? This was one that was a hot rental in the early days of home video, the early days of video stores in my town. And I'd seen it, I think... TV's bloopers and practical jokes maybe played a clip of it or played some of it on TV. And it was just a short spoof of Star Wars done not long after Star Wars by, I believe, San Francisco filmmaker Ernie Facilius. And it's just really funny. There are things I always think of now when I think of Star Wars, I immediately kind of flash to Hardware Wars because it was so funny. Originally, it was released in a whole big box plastic Warner Home Video clamshell tape, which this is replicating the look of, which I love, down to the spine, looks just like those. I actually collect those, regardless of what the movie is. I just love that look and have them all lined up. A hilarious blockbuster movie satire, Fluke Starbucker. Well, I'm not going to read this to you. It's a spoof of Star Wars. The other, uh, the special features include a brand new 2K HD transfer from the only known surviving element, a uh, 16 millimeter Reversal release print protect, uh, presented in its original 133 aspect ratio. That's square to you and me. LPCM stereo audio, or optional English subtitles, audio commentary with writer director Ernie Facilius. Hardware Wars director's cut, Hardware Wars prequel featurette, Hardware Wars foreign version, 1978 creature features interview with writer director Ernie Facilius, which is fun. Uh, uh, if you don't know Bob Wilkins, look him up. He was a great horror host in the San Francisco area. Really cool guy. Hardware Wars Saves Christmas featurette. Uh, awards Reels. Hardware Wars trailer. Pork Lips Now, which was the other thing that was on the original tape, which was a spoof of Apocalypse Now uh, that was done in the 70s. 19 Or 1980 parody of Apocalypse Now from director Ernie Facilius. Plan 9.1 from Outer Space. Or maybe that's 9.3. My eyes are getting worse by the day. Uh, parody remake of Plan 9 from Outer Space with puppets from director Ernie Facilius, reversible artwork, collectible mini poster. So this is, uh, it's, <laughs> the running time is 13 minutes. That's that's the Hardware Wars running time. The, everything else is going to total longer than that. It's in English, English subtitles, 133 aspect ratio, which again is square. This is an all-region Blu-ray, so this will play anywhere in the world. And it is LPCM 2.0 stereo. So once again, we will crack this open. Uh, it's cool to see 
really nice editions of things like this. Now, I know Hardware Wars was re-released around the time, I think, of the Star Wars Special Editions. Facilius sort of capitalized on that and sort of, I, I don't, wouldn't really say cashed in as so much as continued his joke, basically, that this is this weird alternate universe version of Star Wars. And so it's, it's been in and out of print over the years, but I just love that it replicates the look of that old tape that I, how I first saw it. So you take that slip case off and it slips to look like that, which then goes to the other look that MVD Rewind Collection also has, which is to look like an old Media Home Entertainment videotape, which I love. And there's the back there. Cracker open, Hardware Wars, looks like you're looking at the top of a videotape, which is great. And we have exclusive Hardware Wars merchandise flyer. You can get, oh, this is fantastic. Hardware Wars trading cards, Hardware Wars uh, 7.5 inch book. That's fantastic. And the uh, reversible sleeve is a basically alternate art that I've never seen before for Hardware Wars that makes it look like the original Star Wars poster. And did we get that here? We get a replica of the Media Home Entertainment looking cover there. So Hardware Wars coming very soon to a galaxy near you on Blu-ray. Um, my guess is, again, look below for the actual date. These are probably, what I'm talking about today, going to be mostly May to maybe early June releases. Two more to go. Pardon my, my head here. Hi. Hi. And all that noise you hear, I swear to God, it's the chair. So, uh, from the MVD Rewind Collection, Mark DeCoscos, Carrie Ann Moss, Graham Greene, and Tony Todd in Sabotage. Nothing to do with the Beastie Boys song and video. Which at the time, when that hit, I was in college, and all my friends were like, they gotta make a movie. Just make a movie based on the video. It'll be fantastic. Uh, the Dark Heart of Black Ops beats to a secret agenda. I was gonna say New Generation. So, um, Colonel Michael Bishop, that's Mark DeCascos from John Wick Chapter 3, Parabellum. And he was the, one of the co-hosts of, of Iron Chef for the longest time. Probably most people in this country know him from that. I always knew he was an action guy, and suddenly he's on the Food Network. I'm like, it's, it's the action guy. Uh, his last mission went horribly wrong, destroyed from within, sabotaged. Dink. His, he was, his was the only body dragged from the ashes of a black operation that never happened. After years of recovery, Bishop thought he escaped the black ops and began a successful new life as a bodyguard for the rich and famous. Biggest mistake he made was thinking he was out. That he was the best with skills most men died learning, but his past caught up with him. See, his clients began to die violently at the same t uh, shadowy hand that conspired against his black op unit. So, intrigue. This actually sounds pretty fun. Um, it's not a film I know. Special features, uh, main feature presented in 1080p, HD, and 178. Aspect ratio, audio is still PCM 2.0. Stereo, optional English subtitles. New interview with actor star Mark DeCoscos. Half an hour, wow. New interview with actor Tony Todd, 13 minutes. Mark DeCosco's trailer reel, double-sided artwork, collectible mini poster. This is 93 minutes. It's in English. English subtitles aspect is 178. And it is audio 2.0 stereo. And it is a region ABC, which means, once again, anywhere in the world that you would like to experience this MVD Rewind collection of Mark DeCosco's in Sabotage, uh, you can do that. You just got to get it to your door. And uh, your player will have no, have no beef with that. When I wanted to be silly, I would refer to him as Mark de Couscous, but not to his face. So this is a slipcase that slips to reveal the same artwork, front and back, cracker open. And once again, as I always say with the Rewind Collection, it's got the looking like the top of a videotape there. And, uh, oh, interesting. So it's not really a reversible cover it is so much as it is a reversible back or background, which is nice. And then we get the MVD, whoa! Rewind Collection mini poster replicating their Media Home Entertainment looking cover. And that's it for Sabotage. So one left. I'm a rambling guy. What can I say? And yes, I did have an energy drink before I did this. So from the folks at Radiance Films, Radiance is very, very cool. I always say I don't love everything I see from Radiance, but I'm so glad Radiance is doing what they're doing. They do a lot of uh, worldwide Blu-ray premieres for discs or English language Blu-ray premieres for, for titles. They do a lot of, uh, it's predominantly what we would say foreign cinema. So a lot of European films, Italian films, Japanese films. And uh, this falls in line with that. I most recently watched and really enjoyed and uh, reviewed the Bounty Hunter trilogy from, uh, from Radiance. And this feels like it's along the same line, similar packaging. This is Shinobi. Shattered. Uh, <laughs> Shinobi. So I don't know much about this. This is the world English subtitled Blu-ray premiere of Shinobi. A brash ninja in training. You got me already. 
is forced into action when a warlord wipes out his clan and murders his wife and child. Posing as a simple peasant by day, at night he carries out a carefully uh, nurtured plan of robbery and assassination. These three ninja classics, so this is three films in this set, based on the original Shinobi uh, no Mono novels, were a revolutionary new take on the ninja packed with spectacular action scenes. That's all I ask. They subverted original samurai history and became a landmark success that established the ground rules for all ninja movies that followed. So limited edition, 3,000 copies. It's one of those, come in. It's one of those hard shell cases. We've got two discs slipped in there. Cool imagery on the front and the back. Again, as I always say, this thing slips right out. So if you don't want to have that on there anymore, it is uh, three films by Setsuo Yamamoto and Kazu Mori from 62 to 60, 1962 to 1963. Running times are 104 minutes, 93 minutes, 86 minutes. Appreciate the brevity there. Thanks. Black and white. Oh, interesting. Uh, Japanese language, 2.43. So super wide mono. Uh, let's see. Extries. Do, do, do interview with Shozu Ichimami. Sorry about the pronunciation. Director, about the director. Uh, Mains, Mance Thompson on a brief history of Japanese ninja films. Toshiaki Sato on the life and career of Raizo Ichikawa. Original trailers for all three films. New and improved optional English subtitles. Thank you. Always appreciate that. Six postcards featuring imagery from the films. Reversible sleeves featuring artwork based on the original promotional materials. Limited edition booklet featuring new writing by Jonathan Clements and Dane, Diane, sorry, Diane Way Lewis. And this is again at region A and B because like 88 films, Radiance is a uh, British company. So Radiance, uh, again, like 88, like Arrow, you may notice if you follow these sort of things, they don't put everything out in both countries. Some things are British only because somebody else already has the license for America. So if you follow these companies like I do and you see their announcements, sometimes you'll get really excited about something and you'll be like, oh, there's a British flag on that. Which isn't to say you can't import those if you have an all-region player. So the two discs look a little something like that. We have uh, Resurrection, a film by Kazuo Mori. And we open her up, and generally Radiance doesn't do anything too fancy on the disc surface. It's usually a single color in the film's logo. These are the, uh, I'm not going to open it up because I'm particular, the art cards that come along with that, and reversible cover with uh, different artwork there. So that's just one film on here. And this, again, very similar uh, design-wise to the uh, Bounty Hunter collection. That had the six art cards, that had the book, that had the reversible covers, the two discs. So you get there that this is Band of Assassins. I thought that said badass and revenge. So much like the other one, we have two uh, two films on one disc here. Reversible cover with uh, sim simple, simple, cool artwork. Game of Death color scheme there. And then we get a nice thick, I mean, like this is weighty, thick, heavy book with uh, writing on the film and a lot of stills. Wow. Yeah, these books that... Uh, come with the Radiant sets are really good. Like, they're a good read. So that's all I have to discuss for what is coming soon, soon. So as always, look at the descriptions below to find out more about these. If you want to buy them, if you're curious, click on the links and go to Amazon and they'll get, you'll get the specs that I mush mouth forgot. And if you want to buy them, I would ask humbly that you buy them through the links that are below because then I can, you know, afford a haircut. So thank you. Until next time, when we have something that is coming soon, I am Mark, and I will see you again next time when there is something that is coming soon.